Hi, this is Rob from the band Like the Desert. I'm here to show you a better way to use Apple's Logic Studio Pro and Propellerhead's Reason together. So to get started, uh, open up Logic and create a new project, a new empty project. If it doesn't already pop up with one, go up to File, New, and then on the right here choose Empty Project. Now right away it asks us to create a track. Let's leave this decision it's asking us to make until after we get back from setting up Reason. Uh, we want to do that first. With Logic already running, uh, go ahead and start up Reason. You must do it in this order or it won't work. In order for Reason to use Rewire to talk to Logic rather than act as a standalone program, you need to boot it up after you already have Logic running. Once Reason is started, it should give you an empty rack like this. If not, go to File, New, and you'll have an empty rack. First, let's close this timeline uh, or tracks window like this. Just grab it and drag it down. Because we're not going to use Reason to write anything. Reason will simply use its instruments to process the notes that we feed it from Logic. If everything is working properly and it's rewired, you'll see this message at the, at the top here that Reason is working in rewire slave mode. Now, to make sure that Logic is the only program that is handling the input from our keyboard or whatever other devices you're using, uh, let's double check our preferences. So go to Reason up at the top, Preferences, and choose Keyboards and Control Surfaces from this drop-down menu. If there are any icons in this window like I have, make sure that the boxes here are unchecked for each of them. Next, go to Advanced Control from that same drop-down menu and make certain that the bus inputs are set to no MIDI input. This is simply a more advanced way for your keyboard to talk with Reason, which I won't get into right now. Uh, with that done, we can get to creating our instruments. So go up to the Create window and then 19 Digital Sampler. We're just going to leave it on the first preset, and this time let's make a drum machine. Redrum, drum computer. But we're not done here just yet. We need to send the sound from these instruments back into Logic, otherwise the sound gets stranded in Reason. To do this, we have to plug these instruments into Reason's outputs. So press the Tab button, and the whole rack flips around. This top rack here shows all the channels that you can send sound through. Let's move these plugs to channels 3 and 4 respectively. And you'll see why later. If your second instrument, your redrum, is not plugged into an output yet, go ahead and grab the left here, just hold down your mouse button, and then drag with your mouse up to channel 5 and drop it on there. Do the same thing for right onto channel 6. Okay, now we're done wiring our instruments in Reason and we can go back to Logic to complete the circuit. Okay, now we can answer this question that Logic wants answered. You know, most of the tutorials out there will tell you to create an external instrument track, you know, clicking on this. Uh, even the Propellerheads website I mentioned before says to do that, but I can tell you from experience it's a pain in the butt if you're going to be doing more than just sitting there by yourself with one keyboard. So instead, we're going to create two software instrument tracks. So choose software instrument and for number put two. Click create and you have your two tracks here. Let's go ahead and rename these really quick. Highlight instrument one and then double click where it says instrument one. We're going to name this NN19. Do the same thing for the second one, instrument two, double click instrument two and call it redrum. Go ahead and press two on your computer keyboard. Seemingly nothing has happened, but you notice now up at the top menu it says Screen Set 2. The purpose of these is to reduce clutter if you need a lot of windows open. We're going to use Screen Set 2 to open up our environment windows. Go to Window, and then scroll down to Environment, and click OK. Alright, now that we have that window, you can go ahead and close this Arrange window that's sitting behind it. It's not going to close your file, don't worry about that, it's not going to close your project. 
uh, resize that to about half the screen. Now we want to open up another environment window. Do it the same way, window environment. Uh, I'm going to resize these so that I can make it fit the other half of the screen. Okay, now that we've done that, if you press 1, you can go back to screen set 1, which is our main window. If you press 2 again, you go back to your environment windows. It's kind of a handy feature. Uh, set the first window to clicks and ports by clicking this down arrow here, this menu, go up to clicks and ports. What this is, is it shows all of the input from the real world equipment you're working with, as well as a couple other things that just show you what you're playing, uh, and the sequencer input, and I'll get into that in a little while here. If this one on the right doesn't say mixer, go ahead and choose mixer from that menu. Okay, find your software instrument tracks in the mixer window. What we're about to do is start helping Logic understand how to route the MIDI data that you're sending in from your hardware so it knows what to do with it. So go to the clicks and ports window. Now look at this big object here called the physical inputs object. This shows, like I said, all your connections from the real world. Uh, my keyboard shows up on this list as keyboard. Uh, yours may be different, but hopefully you can identify it somewhere in here. I also have my Akai drum pad connected, which shows up on this list as three blank spaces, which is really awesome. So click and drag a cable from the pin next to your keyboard over to the first instrument object in the mixer window to create a connection. Here's my keyboard. Follow that line. Here's that pin. I'm going to hold down my mouse button and drag it over and drop it on this NN19 track. I'm going to do the same thing with the second instrument. I know from experience that this first blank space for my drum pad is the one I need to connect, so I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to drop it on redrum. We want to make a couple monitor objects. Monitor objects show you what it is that you're playing on your keyboards in case you need to test anything. In the mixer window, go to new, this menu up here, and then monitor. All right, move that monitor down here by grabbing the title and just dragging it. Now we want to connect the track to the monitor. Okay, so grab this pin, drag a cable, and drop it on the monitor. If all has worked correctly, what should happen is that we should see this monitor object start displaying something whenever we hit a note on our keyboard. This information is pretty easy to understand. This first column of numbers displays the MIDI channel that your MIDI keyboard is broadcasting on. The second column is the note that you're hitting. And the third column is the velocity or how hard you've hit the note. So since we have had some success with the first one, let's do the same thing for the redrum to make sure that the MIDI drum pad is working correctly. Go to New, Monitor, drag that down, and then grab the pin at the top of the redrum track and drag a cable and connect it to the monitor. All right, now I'm hitting my different pads on my Akai and you can see that it's broadcasting on channel 1 and lots of different notes and velocities. Okay, so the next step now is to talk to Reason.